With all the evidence we have of a warming Earth, it's harder and harder to be a skeptic these days. Derek, if it's safe uh, for you to take us through the situation, please do so. All right, Chris, I feel like uh, I'm feeling the backwash of a jet engine. It just stings every time when these gusts come through. It's picking up. Let me explain. Here's another image. You can just see the towering pyrocumulonimbus clouds that have formed from the bushfires that are ongoing on the ground. The rain has stopped here, but that doesn't mean the threat's over because the water that has dumped into this region, over 15 trillion gallons of water, enough, by the way, to fill up the Great Lakes another foot. Transformers were blowing around us. It looked like fireworks lighting up the sky, and then instantly it went dark. We have now joined the hundreds of thousands of others on the North Carolina coast without electricity. At night, people have the opportunity to drop their swimsuits. It's clothing is optional after dark. <laughs> you Derek, he's ready to record you. I didn't know. You stick around long enough, you'll see plenty of full moons, I believe. that. <laughs> no, let's do an unofficial or official uh, HLN snow check measurement this morning. Here we are, Paul Revere Park. Whoops, got to turn my uh, ruler the right way. <laughs> it was one We're inch. up to nine inches. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> What's one inch? Uh, I need to go back to meteorology school, I think. But I've talked to people that say that the water levels have risen all the way to the second floor, or at least the tops Some of the first yeah. floor. So why would people want to stay, especially with rain coming down like this? We'll, we'll, we'll go see here in a second. We're going to start going down there. Uh, you can see the families riding by now. There are still several more people to come. Last night. Let's take you to the air, show you what it looks like from above, and you too at home can get an idea of just how bad it was. In fact, we are 7,000 feet above the northern Bahamas in the center of Major Hurricane Joaquin. The storm has been notoriously difficult to predict. But I don't need to state the obvious here, but we are officially in hurricane conditions. Hey. Not a bad day at the office. No, this is amazing. But traversing untouched mountainous terrain comes with its challenges. That's why Steamboat Powder Cats enlist expert guides and specialized machinery. A lot of times in these severe storms as well, they're rain wrapped, so they're often hidden behind a shaft of rain that often wow. uh, just disguises the tornado as well. By the way, that footage that you saw a moment ago was called a wedge tornado, and those tornadoes are classified by being wider than they are tall. Eric, if you can hear me, uh, tell us what you're seeing. Uh, hey, John, uh, good afternoon. Listen, we're in Apalachicola, and uh, we have sustained hurricane force winds where we are, but what's the most surprising uh, and, and the most astounding, to be quite honest, is how quickly the storm surge has taken over this this town is brutal out there. <laughs> it is. Good morning, Michaela. I'm, I'm actually having to remind myself that I actually volunteered to do this today outside. Actually, it's just incredible to see how quickly this particular fire uh, grew in size from 50 acres to uh, 25,000 acres in a period of 10 hours. Okay, I want to get the latest from Derek Van Dam live in Birmingham, Alabama. So what are you seeing, Derek? Yeah, good evening, Anderson. This was a very heartbreaking scene for my crew and I to approach this evening as uh, we came to the Columbiana region southeast of Birmingham. That same footage you saw a moment ago was part of the tornado that tore the house that you see behind me completely off of its foundation, ripped it 100 feet from where it was originally located and deposited in shambles behind me. Now, what you're seeing is uh, a rescue operation from the individuals that live in this now, community. Here's the science behind what I'm trying to explain to you. The intense heat caused from the bushfires rises similarly to what, would what we would experience within a thunderstorm. Uh, that's called an updraft. Love it. Three words for you. Pumpkin spice latte. Yes, it's time. <laughs> My favorite. Yes, has it I can't wait. Already? It's a yes it has. It's time. I've already okay. ordered one. The mine. other concern is the strong gusty winds near hurricane force for Cape Cod. But this will be no easy feat considering that we have had record setting temperatures so far in I'm 20 CNN meteorologist Derek Van Dam with it, the Georgia Aquarium. Uh, regardless of where it ends up making landfall, the entire country needs to be on high alert.
We are in the presence of greatness here. I am totally intimidated just to be standing next to you. This is Aaron Simmons, an Olympian from Steamboat Springs. And I want to show you the indiscriminate nature of how tornadoes uh, destroy and the destruction path that they leave behind. Look at this house over my right shoulder. The entire roof has been lifted off of that home. And then I'll get uh, my fantastic photographer, Taka. He has been working so hard. I'm going to have him pan to my left. Look at the houses behind me. That's that's a hundred yards behind me, and they are ver virtually untouched. We uh, what is this exactly that you're witnessing there, Derek? All right, Anna. So what you're watching is the District One in Harris County. The constable is with one of the high water rescue boats, and uh, basically they use this as a staging point for the rescue. So they go out to all the individual homes, everybody impacted by the rising floodwaters. And uh, you can see that they're saving anyone from small children to full adults and even their pets as well and their most important belongings. And that's saying something because this is already the second largest March snowstorm in Denver's history. That puts it into context. Big time totals, 19.1 inches so far at the Denver International Airport. They just tweeted out they've canceled the majority of the flights tonight and for the day tomorrow. So if you're in Denver, you're stuck. But it's paralyzing the highway system around here. And Governor John Bell Edwards, he's a Democrat from Louisiana yesterday. He toured the damaged area within the St. Bernard Parish. And I talked to him about, uh, with all the frequency of the storms impacting this region, specifically southern Louisiana, how can he possibly convince people that it's safe uh, to, to live in a place like this as storms become more frequent and more severe in the future? Listen to what he said. Severe weather incidents are becoming more frequent and more severe. Uh, I'm with Officer Medina, and he's been uh, on the search and rescue boat all day long. I'm just wondering if you can tell me a couple of the stories that you've had today uh, in the rescues. Uh, we had situations of rescuing people out of attics. Yeah, I mean, how rough does it get up there? Well, it's that moment when you punch through the eye wall, the strongest part of the storm. You start to shake, you start to rattle. Obviously, you're belted in in the seats, but the turbulence there is rough, and uh, you can really feel it. Derek, how often do they actually go out? Because I understand they've been out several times already. Yeah, Anderson, hurricane hunters fly out to Joaquin and other storms just like Joaquin at least two times a day. In fact, they have the ability to fly to three separate storms from the international dateline over the Central Pacific all the way to the mid-Atlantic. I'm CNN meteorologist Derek Van Dam in Fish Creek Falls in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and this is CNN. The trademark champagne powder they keep talking about. Low density, high fluff, maximum fun. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it's this cold and you talk outside, like your mouth doesn't necessarily, the words don't actually form. Right? And your fingers, the, don't your fingers don't work. Tweeting is but, very difficult. But that right. is, I mean, that. And this fountain usually freezes once or twice during the winter. It's just that the temperatures usually fluctuate, allowing for those icicles to eventually melt on their own. It's just that this cold snap that we've had has been so prolonged that it hasn't had an opportunity to melt. So we see the spectacular display behind us. And uh, this has got to be Derek Van Dam again in Houston. Thank you very much for that. Great to see that rescue happen again right here on live TV. Uh, just speaking to some of the people that we huddled with uh, when we were being evacuated or moved into the center of our hotel as a safety measure, uh, it's, it's incredible. These people moved, uh, evacuated from Irma two weeks ago from St. John's, an island just to our east, came to San Juan uh, to seek shelter and refuge from Irma, and then all of a sudden they're faced with this monster of a hurricane, Hurricane Maria, that comes barreling through. So uh, there's a lot of uh, you, you know s sadness that they've had to deal with this, but a lot of uh, human spirit that's going to rise up uh, over this tragedy that's affected this island. Pe uh, Derek Van Dam in uh, Puerto Rico for us. Derek, thank you very much. Now, now look at the streets behind me. You can see uh, uh, we've had measurements within the past hour of about six and a half feet above low tide. So high tide hasn't even occurred yet. Worse than we feared. What's the latest? Uh, just hearing that news, too, for the first time uh, coming out of Kentucky as well. But uh, let's talk about the immediate threats going forward. Our, our night of devastating tornadoes continues and really creating some concern. So we still have that as it coincides with high tide that's actually already passed. But nonetheless, the east facing bays and inlets of this island region uh, continuing to uh, see the impacts of storm surge.
as the last round of negotiations here in Durban, South Africa are underway. Now, the beginning of this conference really started out about the science, but that has now shifted towards the politics and the economics behind climate change. This ambitious measures here in Durban. All right, great. Thank you, Mr. Pascal. Okay. We'll leave it there. Joanne, you heard it at COP17, the last day of negotiations. There is indeed enough science in the fourth assessment reports released in 2007 for heads of state to make drastic decisions going forward into the negotiations tonight. Back to you. Now, if we warm to two degrees Celsius or even beyond that, what does that mean for our oceans? So corals in particular are very... Derek, we keep coming back to, to this fact uh, that the aircraft, the, the pilot, asked to change route because of weather. Yeah, and, and that really can be confirmed, Aisha, because there was very turbulent weather across that region at the last point of contact for AirAsia Flight 8501. Look at the eye wall of this storm. It appears it's doing more of a westerly track. We are in the thick of the eye wall right as we enter into the strongest part of the storm. And uh, we were busy doing a live shot a few minutes ago and the worst of the storm is still yet to come. an analogy when we bundle up at nighttime in our in our nice blankets keeping ourselves warm rip that blanket off and then all of a sudden that heat that you had escapes right back into the atmosphere that's exactly what's happened over the eastern half of the u.s we don't have any cloud cover to keep us warm the uh, blanket per se it's just not there no blanket very cold all right so you can hear behind me the the plows are in full force music to the ears of the governor and uh, the people of New York City because it's clearing the streets, but it's, it's almost futile, Roseberry and Errol, because by the time that they're done plowing, the snow just accumulates right back on the ground again, making the road.